the course of our training. There are a lot of little things that we have to pay attention to. Because if you don't pay attention to the little things, you miss the big things. And John Munn once made a comment. He says, it's very rare for a person to be blinded by a log. It's a lot more common for people to be blinded by dust or sawdust. In other words, you don't pay attention to little things, and the fact that you're not paying attention to them, they blind you. This is an important principle in the practice. We are dealing with a large issue, but you're not going to see it if you just think about large issues all the time. Thinking about large issues, you're dealing in abstractions. And sometimes the abstractions can get too big to handle. Because the biggest abstraction is this sense of I am. I am a good person, I am a bad person. And if you feel that you're a bad person, you've got a lot of work to do to find exactly what it is to get to the root of that badness. And for most of us, we go swinging back and forth, feeling that we're perfectly fine, that we run across something that shows that we're not perfectly fine, so that we run off in the other direction. We're miserable. We're hopeless. Well, neither attitude is going to be helpful on the path. This is why the Buddha, when he was teaching Rahula meditation, even before he taught him breath meditation, he said, focus on the inconstancy of things so as, un so as to undercut the conceit, I am. In other words, you look at your own mind, you begin to realize there are good intentions and there are bad intentions mixed up. If you look at the details. It's not a question of it being underlying, having an underlying nature that's good or an underlying nature that's bad. You want to get away from that abstraction of the, the abstraction of the underlying nature, and just look at what's going on. And by paying attention to the moments that you catch yourself of being unskillful, you work with that particular intention. You're not going to try to deal with your entire character all at once, but just see what you've got right here, right now with that particular lack of skillfulness. Because you can deal with individual events. They're not too much. They're not overwhelming. And as you develop this quality of being meticulous, you actually accomplish the training. You are developing the qualities that are needed for the path. When we hear the word conceit, as in the conceit that I am, we usually think of it as meaning that we feel better than other people. But in the Buddhist sense of the term, it means any way that you compare yourself, set up yourself as an entity that is either good or bad in comparison with other people. And it could be the feeling that you're worse. That also is conceit. And the conceit that you've got a really big issue you've got to deal with here and you don't have time for the small issues, that's what gets in the way. So in this sense, the humility that's required to say, yeah, I can change myself through the small issues. I can change my habits, the habits of the mind here, by attending to the details. That's the attitude that will see you through. That's the kind of humility you want. In other words, it's not the humility of saying that you're bad, because that's not really humility at all. It's the humility that's willing to learn from the little things. That's what's useful in the practice. Because after all, the movements of the mind, what are they but very little things? They're so quick that you can hardly notice them. This is one of the reasons why we deal with the little things on the external level first. You look at all the rules for the monks. Two big volumes, and that's just the distilled version. All the way from the big rules, like not killing and not stealing, down to the little rules, like how to take care of your bowl, how to take care of your robe. And 
And as John Suat once pointed out, the rules are not just for the monks, because many of the monks' rules affect the way lay people are going to be interacting with the monks, in which case the lay people have to notice, is this particular issue going to touch on a monk's rule or not? And that way it makes the, the lay people more meticulous as well. So as you learn to be observant of the little things around you, then it makes you more likely to observe the little things inside, the little changes of the breath that indicate that greed has arisen, or anger has arisen, or fear has arisen. All too often we're aware of these emotions only after they've taken over the mind. But to deal with them most effectively, you want to be able to sense them just as they're getting started. And that requires that you be very sensitive to the subtleties of the breath, the subtleties of the feelings in the body that will tend to go along with these emotions, so you can catch them in time. So focusing on the small things is not a distraction. I once knew of a person who had been trained in a Zen center who complained about this obsession with minutia, as he called it. He saw it as a distraction from that, the big, wide open emptiness, the big, wide open liberation. It was just waiting when you stopped focusing on little things. But it doesn't work that way. To see the deathless, you have to be very precise in your powers of perception. After all, it is always there. Why are we not seeing it? Because we're not sensitive enough. How do we become more sensitive? Well, focus on the little things, those little movements of the mind that head off in a skillful and unskillful direction. How do you nurture the skillful ones, and how do you get rid of the unskillful ones? That's the big question. And so if you're dealing with larger abstractions, you're going to miss them, because the larger abstractions say, well, this is more important. The big deals are more important. The little deals we can well, they say, don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. Well, there's some small stuff you've got to sweat. Humility is the lesson. Humility is the quality that you want to bring. It's okay, some of the little things I've got to learn. And you don't allow yourself to feel frustrated if they seem elementary, or if you find yourself going back to the beginning again and again. Each time you go back to the beginning, you learn new things. It's like going back and reading a John Lee. Many of his writings you find, if you go back after a month or two and read them again, you see new things. It's the same book, but you're a different person. You notice different details. Well, the same principle applies to the breath. You keep coming back to the breath, back to the breath. Then you find that you see more things over time. The process may be gradual, so gradual that you hardly notice it. The image in the canon is of a carpenter using a hammer. He knows that as he holds the hammer and uses it to pound away at the nails, the handle of the hammer is getting worn down. On any one day, you can't measure how much it's been worn down, but over time you see the wear marks. It's the same with progress in the mind. Sometimes it's incremental, but that doesn't mean that it's any less real. The important thing is that you have the humility to be willing to learn the little things, notice the little things, master the little things. Because it's in mastering them that the larger issues become clear. If you try to tackle the big issues, run away, you know, your basic character flaws or whatever, you're dealing mainly with abstractions, and abstractions can hide all kinds of stuff. They may sound big, important, impressive, but when you actually look for them, there's not much there. So have the attitude that you're willing to learn any lesson, no matter how small.
And that's the attitude that we'll see you through.